Uh, ever since that wonderful flowering of Australian rock in the 70s, uh, the share of domestic music in our charts um, and on the radio has hovered around 25%, that bottom wiggly line. Um, never below 20, never much above 30. At, at times, Australian repertoire has represented over 30% of the albums in the top 100. And the popularity of Australian bands in the live setting and the enduring popularity of the ARIA Awards is proof that Australian consumers have a strong and abiding commitment to the music made in this country. No matter how much the technology changes, no matter how much the means of discovery and delivery changes, or indeed how much society changes and the music itself changes, we still manage to find the good local music. The cream still rises to the top. And by the way, that percentage for domestic music is significantly higher than the percentage of people, say, watching Australian films. Just saying, just pointing that out. Um, significantly higher. The problem, however, is that as the overall sales trend decreases and as the market flattens, that is to say more releases, fewer superstars, we're simply not seeing the emergence of very many stars. And nor are we seeing any Australians recognised as global stars. And we are, ladies and gentlemen, let me make this very clear, in a business that needs stars. The cost of making a globally competitive hit record with world-class production and world-class videos is still enormous. And like any speculative business, we need some of our investments to pay off. To give you a point of reference, the highest sales ever recorded for an Australian album in Australia itself are in the vicinity of one million units. A few albums have reached or come close to reaching this extraordinary number. Uh, albums like John Farnham's Whispering Jack, Ice House's Man of Colours, uh, the self-titled debut album by Savage Garden, or more recently Delta Goodrum's Innocent Eyes. And beneath the lofty heights of that list, there are many, many Australian albums that have achieved sales in excess of 300, 400, even 500,000 units. There's a nice selection of them there. Uh, and I'm not going to list them all, but it's a long and illustrious list. But here's the, here's the thing. In the last three years, no Australian album has reached 300,000 units. In fact, no Australian album has even reached 200,000 units, although Empire of the Sun came close. And the biggest album of last year by an Australian band was The Hilltop Hoods, and that release stopped at around 125,000 units. So of the 831 Australian albums released last year, and don't worry, there was 1,200 the year before, only 30 made the top 100, and fewer still sold platinum. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out two things. The artists who made these records are not getting very much money for the wonderful music they're making. And secondly, these units are getting perilously low for the people who invest in music development. 